it was okay being able to set a private password which of course can be bypassed. It was okay not to offer encryption in the memo pad, not to put a password on any of your memos. They really haven't changed things, so a lot of third-party applications have come about that allow you to encrypt and set uh, your Palm Pilot so it's more secure. For the last three years, different groups have uh, not changed the security of the Palm Pilots, but have kind of brought the software to a different audience of people maybe including you guys. And the first thing I've asked when I've given this talk before, or talked to people before, is if you guys have your beam, your infrared beam set to on. Does everyone have it set to on by default or is it off? Okay, let's check real quickly right now. So you go in your Palm Pilot and go into Preferences. And inside Preferences in the General Preferences, you'll find at the bottom it says your beam receive is either on or off. I always leave mine set to off, which kind of sounds antisocial to a lot of people because it means I don't get all the little business cards, you know, and the little programs. Like my, I've got six different memo pad sketching programs, things like that. I recommend turning it to off, and that's kind of the first step because that's an that's an automatic way for people to be able to send you applications. Most of you are saying, "Oh well, when they send me the application right now, I get the I get to choose whether or not I want to use it." Well, if anyone sat through any of the other talks, people know about buffer overflows and how you can send commands to the TCP IP stack, and then maybe it fails, but it actually executes the command. We're going to go into it later. I'm going to show you guys the schematic and how it works, but the infrared channel is just a TCP IP stack. It's just as uh, susceptible to buffer overflows, just as susceptible to sending information, and it's only probably a week or two weeks before someone realizes that you can reset one bit and get people to automatically accept an application, the infrared. So what I'm going to talk about today is an educational talk. That's always the disclaimer at the beginning of it. I want you guys to know that um, as we step through it towards the end of the class, we're going to be looking at some code from a commercial application. And I only show you this so you can kind of understand a little bit of the background about the differences between the way a Palm Pilot executes a program and works and uh, the way a Windows program, for example, works, or a Linux program. Um, with 6 million users, like I mentioned before, most people say, why would you exploit? Why would you even try to protect your Palm Pilot? Well, I, I, I know you guys out there have your phone numbers in it, and we're thinking that if people get a list of your phone numbers, that's not going to be that big of a deal. Well, maybe that won't be that big of a deal that they can know who your friends are, know who the people, whom the people are that you associate with. But what about those passwords that you might have stored in that memo pad file that's marked private, for example? Anyone can sit a Palm Pilot down if they have a hot sink cradle, and you can go get one for $19 from good guys put it in their computer in a hot sink, then their, your information is on their computer. That's it. There's no password. There's nothing you can do. That information is completely public inside of your application and where the Palm Pilot stores its databases. There are different input-output options for the Palm. Um, with the 3X and above, you have the infrared port. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over the hot sink port, which is really just a serial port, a DB9 port. And also, we're going to go over some techniques that we can use to actually go in and look inside and, and look how your Palm Pilot protects your information. This is Palm Data Security, not Windows 2000, also, if anyone's in here for that adventure. Why exploit and protect Palm Pilots? Exploit Palm Pilots because Palm users still have a false sense of security and because of the device simplicity. For the first According to Palm, for the first 600,000 users, those are the people that were adopters of the Newton, people who actually use old, old devices that offered uh, handwriting recognition, let you store your information, let you use a keyboard with it, these things. So we're the experts, maybe, among the PDA category. Now with Microsoft moving into it with Windows CE, of course, there's a lot of different competitors for it, but the Palm Pilot still outsells the CE machine um, by, I think the last factor is six to one. So this is the predominant platform. And because of that, you have people using it like 
the person I saw at Best Buy the other day who walked in and said, oh, can I get a Palm? And the guy's like, yeah, you want to go ahead and get the 5XZ? And he's thinking commission on the side. You know, he's thinking, go ahead and get the 5XZ. And they go, oh, that's great. I'm going to store in there all my birthdays. I'm going to store in there all my important numbers. And I'm thinking, wow. You're taking this around with you everywhere. So you've got all your important information with you right there in your pocket. And the one time that you leave it sitting there in the restaurant, and that person goes, and they know your maiden name because you have your mom's name in there. you know. So they know all your information. Also going to exploit it because the developers don't put time into their protection. This is a really sensitive area. Um, the Palm Pilot community it has at last count over 70,000 developers of applications. That's people all over the world. It's a really simple platform to write for. It's a really transparent platform to write for. It's kind of like a whole, a whole language developed around forms. <laughs> it's kind of like HTML forms in its most basic sense. And because of that, everyone develops with it. You can get free development kits. You can get uh, Darren Messina's uh, free alternative development kit. You can get a lot of information on, on 3Com's website about the software. One particular example that I always cite is there's this company named Standalone. I don't know if anyone has super names on their computer. Or, you know, they have Workout Tracker, or Casino. This company, Standalone, makes good applications, and they made three of them. And then they decided that they were going to go buy other people's applications and bring them in under the Standalone banner. Well, people really like super names because it takes your address book and it organizes it into tabs and you can set up different groups and you can set up different things. Well, the program costs $20. And as we know, just like Linux and everything else, people want free. People want free software. And because 75% of the Palm Pilot software is free and only 25% of it is commercial applications, this eventually found its way to someone who wanted to look inside of it and, find, and make super names free. Well, Standalone became really upset at the whole developers community, and they threatened to pull all of their applications at this issue. What they didn't tell you is their protection inside of the application was as simple as check register key. It says that in the middle of their code, check register key. They made no reasonable uh, effort to protect their application. They took it for granted that everyone was a simple user or that everyone didn't want a level of protection. Well, unfortunately, we store all of our names inside super names. So they also have a section that's marked check password. And you can patch one byte of that password. And you hot sync. And you replace the version of super names that's in your computer. And you can view every single private record in the program. They've made no reasonable effort to try to protect it. The last part is we have to protect our own Palm Pilots. It's not going to seem like a big deal yet, maybe. Maybe everyone's gotten that application that turns all your uh, Palm Pilot character set into delete characters, fills it with the E's and the threes and the fours, and that's probably the first example of someone taking advantage of the simplicity of the Palm, um, of the Palm platform. So I think it's important to understand that in addition to exploiting it, one of the main goals is to try to get people to protect their applications. Has anyone in here played or seen the Game Boy emulator Liberty for the Palm Pilot? OK. That's an example of an application that's protected very heavily. We're going to go into that later um, with respect to the author. We're going to go into that later. but. Uh, I'm also going to talk about how there needs to be a balance between the protection that you use in a Palm Pilot and the simplicity we expect from the applications that we use. Your Palm Pilot serial port here is a lot like your computer's serial port. It's 3.3 volts. It's low power. It's DB9. Standard RS-232. This presentation will be available online, by the way, but you can see a link here. This is a really great technical link on um, the layout of the Palm Pilot. I know it might be hard to see from the back there, but basically you have one pin that's responsible for hot syncing, and actually that will turn on the device too. So when you make external devices, like I, I don't know if anyone has the Palm Pilot foldable keyboard here or the, or the Go type, that's what they do. They send a signal to pin four. They turn on your Palm Pilot, and it's ready to go. Once you're in the hot sink, once you have it on, and once you have it in a cradle or any kind of DB9 RS-232 device, it can completely control your Palm Pilot. It can reset it. 
which you can use by sending an on off to pin 7. And they can also transfer information back, and they have three different methods to do it. You can do it with standard uh, Palm Pilot hot syncing. You can do it with a direct data stream to the Palm Pilot and to the computer. Or you can do it with a custom conduit, and we'll go a little bit into that. The second option you have is an IRDA port. It uses a modified TCP IP stack. It reacts to many common TCP IP commands. You can set up sessions. You can set up um, streams of information. It uses a standard TCP IP header. Um, and it lets you communicate very eff effectively. Of course, your beam bit must be set to on, which is a lock on your Palm Pilot. Um, what 3Com didn't plan for, and this is another example of how, as the platform grew, they didn't enhance the security of the Palm Pilot, is that, again, it's one, one single byte inside of your application that's on or off that allows you to beam. So they thought that they could lock people out of beaming copyrighted information. It definitely gives a false sense of security to the developers. You can do a standard buffer overflow. If you guys want to see more details of it over at this website, you'll get to see the operating system interacts here with the upper layer API. And you get to go through the application and it works with the user. And here's the driver mode. Palm Pilot's use of virtual driver um, system, but it's tied to the serial port. So basically, if you write a driver for the Palm Pilot to drive the keyboard, um, if you drive uh, a modem, if you have a minstrel, if you have something else, it actually interacts just like it's a serial port. You need to emulate the serial port inside of the driver. Some of the techniques that we can use to protect our Palm Pilot include some operating system level tricks that you can use, some attacks against applications, and uh, we're going to go over some future ideas for exploit. Because I think, probably, and I'm just going to venture to guess, that in the next six months, you're going to see a major Palm Pilot Trojan horse, most likely, that's passed to the Palm Pilot, because it's open right now. Once it hits 10 million users, and 10 million users who are walking around at the local restaurants beaming everyone their business cards, it's going to seem like a good option for someone to write this code. And to understand how, how the Palm Pilot works is going to help you protect yourself and others against it. This is the new Palm logo. Ooh. The operating system processes applications in a very specific manner. All developers are tied to making their applications work the exact same way. It is a main event loop inside of it. It parses all your every time you choose from the menu, every time you choose from a button. It's all coded as strings, and it's all hard coded in the in the application. You also have system shortcuts, which can redirect your beam and can set up uh, debug modes. And there's some notorious hacks into it that lets you see and dump the registers live while you're using it. There's one key one, actually. We're going to go over a method to redirect your infrared out through your uh, serial port. So basically, you can learn about how that application sends itself over the uh, modified TCP IP stack, you can dump it to a file, you can look at the entire session, and you can see how the infrared ports works. Palm Pilot has limited, uh, I'm sorry, 3Com, or Palm now, has limited developer's information on the infrared port, because they actually used, an, um, they actually used uh, an implementation from a third party company. And this third party company, um, they've been around for, I'd say, eight years, and this stack technology they use in the infrared port is about, probably about four to five years old, so it predates the 3X pretty significantly. And we're also going to get into, in this uh, section, some of the applications that let you view your databases, let you view the status of your databases, and let you look inside the registers and memory parts of your palm. Should I yell real loud to wake people up? <laughs> All right, Palm Pilots. How the operating system processes your application. All Palm apps save their state. They actually have what 3Com calls a static state, which means that at every point the application progresses, it has a pointer in memory to pick it up, pick up exactly where it is. It also doesn't run background processes, so you don't really have a multitasking operating system. 
which means that your Palm Pilot's very stable, actually, since it's not trying to do a lot of stuff with the Dragon Ball processor. Uh, Hackmaster is an exception. Uh, does anyone have Hackmaster hacks on their computer, like you know, like Beam Edit and those kinds of things that you have? Um, the way they get around it is, we're going to go into it a little bit, but um, every Palm Pilot application works through something called system traps. And each system trap um, can be mapped just like the Windows API. You can actually hook into every single one of them. So that's what the hack masters do, is they hook into each of those system traps. Um, when we talk about best practices, we're going to talk about why leaving your hack master extensions probably not the best idea because 3 com never really intended for anyone to patch their own system traps. It's just that need arose, especially for modifying the, uh, the little pen keyboard that you have and doing spell check and those types of things. <clears throat> it's actually really, really dangerous on a Palm Pilot because the hack master runs inside your ROM and can run inside your RAM and kernel space actually. Um, as opposed to other operating systems that take the API and run it on top of the kernel. Not like Windows, but more like Windows 2000. Technically, one app is running at a time in the Palm Pilot. The memory is initialized at start, and it stays allocated until your soft reset. That means that if you've used your Palm Pilot for three weeks now, and you keep switching back and forth from applications, and you wrote this, and you've deleted this, and you've set this up, if you were to three weeks later use an application like Insider to look inside the memory inside your Palm Pilot, all your information, your state, is still in there. Um, that's something that uh, you don't have in the Windows environment because basically when you shut down and restart, everything is gone and it starts again. Or if you're forced to shut down and restart. <laughs> Palm Pilot supports hidden windows, which can exchange information with on screen. Not a lot of developers know this, but there's a few developers out there who've used this, which is a great way to protect your information. Because actually, everything we see is a form on screen, and you can create off screen alerts and forms, the pop ups and the static pieces of uh, um, static input that you see on your screen. You can actually use, for example, your uh, register, when you register your Palm Pilot application, we'll use standalone for an example. In the latest version of their protection, they got somewhat wise to the fact that they had documented in their source code their entire protection scheme. Now they use a method where they, where they write some of the information to an off-screen window that you can't see when you do your registration. It actually contains the hash for, uh, if, you, if you use a special command, you can see the hot sync ID turned into hex, which is what they use to generate your unique code. There are several shortcuts. Everyone knows the shortcut stroke looks like an L, a lowercase L, plus dot, and these commands. These commands were uh, used by 3Com support to let you actually debug programs and things that are going on inside your Palm Pilot, um, or your Palm. If you use .i, it starts your beam receive. That's automatic. It doesn't matter whether your beam receive is on. It doesn't matter whether it's off. It just starts it. And basically, it sends a flow of any information you want out through uh, your Palm Pilot. If you use .s with the shortcut stroke, you get to redirect your beaming. <coughs> Excuse me. It redirects your beaming to a serial port. This is actually um, a really interesting use, I think, of the palm. You stick it in your hot sync cradle, you do use .s to redirect your beaming to your serial port, and you can view what applications are beaming in and out. For example, I don't know, does anyone play IR chess here, or any of the great IR games that you have, Battleship stuff? One uh, experiment that I did was to set my beam to my serial port, and then read the information that it was sending back via IR. And actually, to show you an example of, of um, a little bit of I would say laziness maybe with the Palm Pilot developers. Every single time that you send something via IR, it resyncs and sends all your registration information to the other person. Basically, it shares an encrypted back and forth between the program. It's a nice program though. .t is an IR loopback. <clears throat> this was used so that you can actually record the information that's being shot out of your IR port um, back inside your Palm Pilot. Dot one is a debug mode. It lets you go in and view the registers of your Palm Pilot. It's not very robust. It was mostly intended to find out what the last error message was by 3Com support. Dot two is open the serial port in debug mode. And this is really, really interesting and really useful. There's no documentation on this one. The reason is, <coughs> 
When the first Palm Pilot was released, 3Com told everyone, this is for hot syncing. That's all this does. And then we realized there are all these great peripherals that you can add on to it. You can put your modem on, you can put your GSM on it, you can put the, uh, the new GoVox re uh, voice recorder on it. Um, so they didn't, they didn't actually document it as well as they should have. So what happened was Landware, the company that makes the GoType keyboard, decided to use this shortcut and read the information from the serial port and watch the communication of it because they had the hardware specs, they didn't have the software communication specs. So little, I don't think 3Com intended for someone that, that was a commercial developer to actually hack their own <laughs> Palm Pilot, but it happened. Dot three is to disable the auto off. I actually really like that one because it really makes me angry when I'm taking notes. All of a sudden the thing turns off. Yeah, it turns on automatically, but then I gotta get you know the shortcut out and get my stylus out. You also have dot four. Dot four flashes your username and unique number inside your Palm Pilot. This one's a little dangerous. <laughs> this one actually gets rid of your Palm Pilot's username, which is a randomly assigned name, and also a, a, some random numbers in there. Basically, when you do that, your Palm Pilot can't identify itself, and you're going to have to do a hard reset. <coughs> Dot five removes your, uh, your user configuration, your hot sync. The Palm Pilot uh, registry is called savepreferences.pdb. It's a database. It's not encrypted. It doesn't have any special information in it, <coughs> except that it contains most of your shareware usernames and passwords that you use. Um, it's bad to, uh, to reset your uh, user configuration and your hot sync ID. Basically, when you use this trick and you resync your palm, everything comes out in duplicate because it doesn't know what your record is. This is another example of where 3Com Actually, uh, I think they were hedging their bets. They wanted to make the hot sync application quick and easy to use. When in truth, what they ended up doing with it is making it uh, very poorly unrobust. So there's a program called Backup Buddy that lets you back up all your databases and everything. That kind of takes adv uh, advantage of the fact that the Palm Pilot hot sync is a little bit uh, simplistic. Dot six displays your ROM date. Very, very cool. Going to Best Buy sometimes and run a few dot six shortcuts on their things, you'll find out how old their inventory is. Dot seven lets you to uh, toggle your battery meter. Even though 3Com said that they weren't going to allow you to use um, actual rechargeable batteries with the Palm Pilot, a lot of us do. I used to. One thing that you should do, if you do, is use the dot seven shortcut because it will change your battery meter to reflect the fact that you have rechargeables. It will more accurately reflect your, uh, uh, your, the state of your battery. Every Palm Pilot program is a dot PRC file. So you see those things running around. You see uh, every application uses a Palm resource file to, to run itself. It's a collection of forms which, for example, the form in your date book is the listing of the lines in your, in your current um, appointment information. It uses alerts, which is when it pops up and says you have to register this shareware application. It uses strings, which you can actually hard code inside the application. A lot of developers who are using uh, assembly language, and about 80% are, place a lot of strings in, uh, within their applications, such as a check register key. The Palm Pilot uses a Dragon Ball processor. It's a Motorola M68K processor. It's the same one that was in your Commodore 64, just modified for power consumption. <clears throat> Loft offers a Dragon Balls app to view your M68K registers. That's what it's called. It's a very clever name with a Z. And it actually lets you look inside of all the registers inside uh, your Palm Pilot while it's running. It's actually really useful because an application like um, Afterburner, which is a, a Palm Accelerator, an overclocking application. Um, the developer of it used this to actually go inside and look at why his application was crashing so often, and I find it much more stable. What you can use it for is to see exactly what's going on in that slow program. So if you use, I don't know if anyone uses Datebook 4, but I assume almost everyone uses the Datebook alternative. That application is so slow and so sloth-like because of its programming that you can actually go in and see what it's doing. Basically, every two lines of code, it's making a direct memory call. There's a program by uh, Sylvain Bulu 
I think, called Insider. This program actually lets you view your memory location inside your Palm Pilot, lets you disassemble inside your Palm Pilot, lets you copy sections of memory from your Palm Pilot, both live and in storage. This is a really amazing application. Um, it's free unless you get the pro version. To get the pro version costs you about, I think it's about $59. I don't have the pro version. I use the regular version. There's also a program called Palm Disassembler. You can get these programs from um, Palm Gear, of course. It actually lets you disassemble your Palm Pilot applications in memory. I think probably the best way that you can learn programming if anyone wants to be a Palm Pilot developer because it's a, it's a great community of people developing applications is to actually use the Palm Disassembler to look inside. Um, the only weakness of it is it doesn't let you view uh, the system traps, which are something else that you have to uh, contend with when you're programming for the Palm Pilot. Next section is on application attacks. Um, by attack, I don't mean guy beating up the application, taking advantage of it, you know, blue hair running around. What I mean is actually looking at the way the Palm Pilot runs and the way a program runs. This is the Palm Disassembler program that I talked about before. This is live on your Palm Pilot. And you can actually see the code that each application is running in here. Your, unit, your user interface is a physical layer. It's what you see on front of your palm screen. Um, when you turn it on, every app is made of performs, which is your input section, alerts, which is your pop-up section, and strings, which is your text section. Um, when the resources are extracted, you get these little binary files, and they're actually in plain text. So you can actually view the resources that each Palm Pilot application uses. Um, if you have TF or if you have F, you've extracted a form. If you have A, you've extracted an alert. And if you have STR, you've ex extracted a string. The rest are all code segments. Most Palm Pilot programs and most Palm Pilot developers use two code segments. They use the uh, application initialization segment, and then they'll run all of their main events and then their main programming off it. You also have stylish actions. So in addition to all the resources that we see, you also have your stylish actions, your button actions, and your keyboard input. That's actually the digital keyboard, not actually the go type there that I'm referring to. Um, so all those methods together let you interact with the forms, and that's what it is. It isn't an application that's running all the time and using up memory and using resources. That's why I like the Palm Pilot, because it's basic and straightforward and lets you do what you want to do. The M68K processor is Motorola's processor. You have two versions. You have the Dragon Ball and you have the Dragon Ball EZ, which is in the Palm 3X and the Palm 5X and 5XE. It's pretty simple, but we'll go over it. Basically, everything in the application works linearly. It goes from beginning to end. It has a few subroutines that it uses. Most programs run in a straight line fashion. So the way they get around, uh, did you do it right or did you do it wrong, is with simple instructions that you might, if you've done any assembly language program, you recognize. These are the Palm Pilot opcodes, the equivalents of branch all the time, which is opcode 60, B and E, branch if not equal, which is opcode 66, branch of equal, which is seven, uh, 67, branch, uh, branch of greater than and branch of less than, and then debuffer. 3Com released a Palm debugger, and then they made it so that uh, Code Warrior, one of the major development platforms of the Palm Pilot, could then continue the development of the debugger. And they kind of left it in a state where it only has information up to version 3.0 and 3.1 of the operating system. So someone developed and named it after his dog, this program called Debuffer, which is a full-featured debugging application for your Palm Pilot. This application uses a system trap, 4E48, that was reserved as unused by 3Com to actually control the execution of the program. That will come into play a little bit later when we're talking about Liberty and how they protect their application. A few other opcodes. Instead of SEQ set of equal, you set 
to 50 automatically sets it to any number you want. You also have NOP, which is 4E71, which is no, uh, or no op, which is um, a no instruction. You also have RTS, which is return. Every Palm Pilot subroutine has to follow the exact same specification. It starts with the link, it starts with reading the memory in, processes it, and it has to return it in one register, D0. Just like uh, when you're using 16-bit uh, Windows applications, actually. Clear is for, uh, I'm sorry, yes. Clear equals 42, which lets you reset memory locations. And move number one or move number zero is uh, move Q number zero, move Q number one, seven zero and zero one. It's a two byte. Uh, it's a two byte operation code. All your Palm Pilot applications work with system traps. This is the API. It's transparent um, to the application. It doesn't know, of course, whether it's calling a patched section of it, whether it's calling a hacked section of it, or what you're doing. This is how you can extend the usefulness of your Palm Pilot. System trap DLK get sync info. That's what it's called. Anyone can run this. There's no restrictions on it. Anyone can view all of your hot sync information. That's how an application that's shareware will often get your hot sync ID. There's two other methods to do it. They require mem locks, and they, re uh, they require you to lock the memory, or they require you to read the default database in your Palm Pilot. Thus far, no developer has begun to use that, although that would be a better protection method for your application. Sistrap str compare, that's pretty straightforward. Compare two strings together in your Palm Pilot, return the result, are they equal, are they not equal? Um, it usually will end a key routine from a, um, an actual shareware developer. The shareware community, like I mentioned, is really robust. There's 70,000 uh, shareware developers. Um, and uh, companies like Standalone, Landware, Iambic Software that uh, creates uh, action names and also creates um, uh, the All Money application. Um, <clears throat> they actually, uh, to give you an example, let's use Datebook. Datebook is, I think the latest version is like 380K, and your Palm Pilot has in it. If you have the five x, uh, if you have the five rather, because it's really cool looking, you have two megs of memory in it, of RAM. So that takes up one quarter of your memory. Um, that's because they've left in there their old string compares and old data and old uh, code inside of your application because it's too too much of a pain to recompile it sometimes. Apparently, uh, for about probably 20% of the applications out there, they'd run much faster if they went in and dug out that old code. You also have, which is the closest a Palm Pilot has to an encrypted string, which is CRC 16 calc block. Uses, uh, it calculates a 16-bit CRC of information in memory. This is smarter than this for a developer to use if you want to use it. This is a one-to-one -one comparison. Most people don't know that CRC 16 calc returns the result not only of the 16-bit CRC, but also the result of the comparison of the two pieces of information, which is a really important distinction um, between itself and string compare, and it's a different way to check your applications if you're a developer. Since the Palm Pilot came out, there have been free tools that let you assemble and disassemble code for your Palm Pilot. One of the most popular is uh, Pilot Disassembler. It's very quick and thorough. It has some switches and it runs in DOS, and I'm going to show you an example of it in a little bit. Um, it's very, very fast. It's very functional. It lets you look at what, uh, what's going on inside of a Palm Pilot application. You also have PRC to bin, which takes all Palm Pilot resources, dumps them to the binary files, and lets you look at the forms and the elements of your application. And then you have my favorite program, UltraEdit, which is this fantastic editor that lets you view things in hex or in plain text mode. Um, that's at ultraedit.com. I get nothing. I wear, you know, their name on my shirt, whatever. They don't give me anything. This is the most amazing thing that was written for the Palm Pilot world that wasn't written by 3Com. The Palm Pilot OS emulator lets you emulate your Palm Pilot on your PC. Some people may know about this, some people don't. This is a great way actually to test programs to see if it's going to crash your current configuration. 
What you do is you run the emulator and you seed it with a ROM for your different operating systems. You get this off 3Com's development site, which is palmos.com slash dev. It lets you uh, use your Palm 3 ROM, your Palm 3X, the different versions of your operating system, basically, and test how the application is going to run on it. You can set your hot sync ID in it, which I think is actually really neat to see if your uh, program's going to crash because it has some kind of obscure characters, capitals, numbers, letters in your hot sync ID. Comes with a ROM extract utility, or you can find ROMs on the internet. And it lets you research and test your applications. So in the example of Liberty, you're supposed to run all your games on this before your entire Palm Pilot crashes. <laughs> We're going to go into a simple protection, an application called Launchem. Launchem is uh, demoware. It lets you demo your applications for 15 days. It lets you, it's a, a special screen. Uh, it changes basically your view of your operating system. It's got nice tabs and you organize your applications. You've got a trash can. You've got all these great different resources. It's a, one of the most expensive, it's by a company called Sin Solutions and they actually charge a lot for uh, their shareware. I don't know how you guys feel, but when you buy your Palm Pilot and you get it, you know, online, it's like 150 bucks for your Palm Pilot now. Um, it's respectable that these uh, that the development time they've put into making an application like this, other than the fact that this is based on a freeware application, this particular program, um, actually goes into creating new versions of the program, and. <clears throat> I think it's important to always keep in mind that if you're going to develop a Palm Pilot application, that you should make sure to make it reasonable for the community of users out there who um, rely on it every day. So we're going to go over how this application protects itself. Why don't you guys go ahead and, uh, if you're taking notes, take down the right section of the screen and the discovery section of the screen, because I'm going to be switching back and forth inside of uh, my computer. The first part of understanding the protection of Palm Pilot programs is to understand the intent of the developer. If you are a developer, um, I think DemoWare is a good idea, but the only true protection that you're going to have for your program and, and all the time and effort you put into writing your program is to actually make it feature limited and not include the features in the program because the truth is that a simple uh, alert that anyone can see that says demo uh, is something that people can take advantage of. And when you put all that time and effort into programming an application and it's protected in a, in a simplistic way, you're not going to see, um, you're not going to go see the benefits of all your work. Okay, the first step is we'll start up the Palm Pilot uh, operating system emulator here. Palm Pilot emulator looks like this. You start it up, it asks you um, if you want to stick it on your start menu, which is uh, fancy and nice. Um, you get to create a new session in it. You choose the device you want to emulate. In this case, we'll do the Palm 3 because it doesn't make you uh, go through your graffiti sync when you start it. Um, we're going to choose a generic uh, skin for it, and we're going to choose to use 2 megs of memory for it. You choose a ROM file, one that you've extracted off of your Palm Pilot and you start up the emulator. That looks familiar. It looks exactly like your Palm Pilot. It acts exactly like your Palm Pilot. And if you notice, the beat is set to off by default. Okay, we're going to load in the application. And the way you load an application is you right click on the interface, you install an application database, and we're going to go ahead and install a version of uh, Launchum by, by Sin Solutions. <laughs> All right, the application is loaded uh, much quicker than hot syncing. <laughs> You use this interface just like your, your, uh, you use your Palm Pilot. Your arrow is your, is your stylus, and you can interact with it directly. You can see Launchum's over here. Launchum is an editor. When you start Launchum, it says, Welcome to your Launchum demo. 
If you, if you like Launchroom, you can purchase it at Synergy Solutions website, SynSolutions.com. Unfortunately, one thing they didn't realize is because this is a demo, you actually have to delete the application, which deletes your preferences for it when you buy it, and then reinstall it. It's actually a very frustrating solution for a lot of people. You can set it to be your default launcher. So that's it. During the discovery phase of understanding how the application protects itself, we found out that a nag flashes welcome to demo at startup. The about says uh, demo, so you can see that by going to the about of the application. It's just like you're running it on your Palm Pilot. It says demo across the top right there. And that's what we figured out uh, it uses to protect itself. Now this is actually a very basic protection. I really want everyone to understand before I begin this part that um, this is a really good application and it's worth buying even though it's a little bit expensive. Um, however, I think it should be protected uh, much more strongly because it's a, very, uh, it's a very good application. So after you've looked at that, you go inside of the method of it. And the method we're going to use is to disassemble it. We're going to use the Palm Pilot disassembly program. It's a DOS application, so we run to DOS and hope that the computer doesn't crash. You'll see the directory of information here. I've got the tools uh, dis, which is Palm Pilot disassembler, and PRC to bin, and I've got high note launch them and my walkthroughs for this. Um, you run DIS, and you run question mark. Oh, there we go. Actually, you run it without the question mark, and you can look at all the command line options for it. It has help. It lets you set the offset you disassemble by. And it lets you set the instructions you use. You can use a custom traps file to view the system traps. But mostly, it just works by doing DIS, DIS in the application's name. And because they're very tiny programs on the Palm Pilot, it actually works rather quickly. Yeah, see, it's working really quickly. It's the quality of Windows right here. There you go. All right. It's reading all that sophisticated code. While that's working, we'll go back to this side of things. Oh, there we go. It's done. OK, so we, we're left with the disassembled code in this directory that we can look at. That's the source file right here. Now we're going to go into the method that you would use to view this application's code. The first thing is you have to take a Palm Pilot application and divide it into its resources. So you go ahead and go back to your MS-DOS prompt and use, use PRC2bin, which lets you separate, separate out the resources that you see in your Palm Pilot, and you use Launcher. And it just extracts an entire text file of all the resources inside your Palm. So now you can see we have here alerts in this section. We have bitmaps in this section. And then we also have forms and strings that make up the application. So what you would normally do in this application is you'd search it for the form that's your about. The about nag is number 270. Everything in the Palm Pilot is very specific, very documented, very viewable, and very public, which makes it an easy platform to learn to program on. So we'll look at alert number 270 here, which is this one at the top. We'll use Ultra Edit, highly recommended. And we'll see that this is exactly what we saw on our screen. Launchum demo. Welcome to the demo of Launchum. If you like Launchum, you can purchase it at Sin Solutions. That's the way the Palm Pilot works. Everything's embedded in the PRC file, and everything can be extracted. In the interest of time, you search the application for that. The application, uh, you can actually see that it occurs at address 376A. You can actually see that it shows the form, and it uses a knit form to display the about. It actually displays the alert in the same manner. And you can skip the nag, and you can modify one byte to do that. This is a good commercial application, like I emphasized. That's very simple protection for your Palm Pilot. 
There's an intermediate protection for your Palm Pilot. I'll also point this out as an example. High Note uses a great protection scheme. It doesn't slow down your Palm Pilot. It doesn't slow down application. It uses a four, diff four diff I'm sorry, a three-section key, and it not only checks it during the registration, it also checks it midway through using the program and forbids you from using it if there's not the letter H at this one particular place inside your code. That, to me, is a good example of the balance between the sophistication of the protection and the simplicity of the protection and the fact that we like our programs to run quickly. It's by a, a company called Cyclos. It's a great application. It's an alternative to BrainForce. It lets you put text and pictures into the same outlines that you do. Um, it has a nag. It asks you to register. If you register bad, it tells you invalid entry. It has the invalid entry alert inside of it. It also has a form that you see at startup, and it also has a registration form. Like I mentioned, this is a very smart protection. You take your key in, and about eight lines later, it says, oh, CRC 16 calc block. Let's see if the two codes match. It says yes. It's only actually checking the first segment of your code until later when you try to run the program. Then it actually checks the second segment. Won't let you create any new items if, you're, if your code's not proper. So basically, uh, in terms of uh, preventing people from cracking the application and, and matching the security and the functionality of shareware with it, this actually is a good protection because people think they've patched it, suddenly the thing doesn't work. They think it's ruined. It's uh, quite effective to uh, obfuscate actually your code and the intent of it. Um, I want to go over protection ideas. There's a trade-off between complexity and speed which I've been talking about. Palm Pilot programs need good protection. They don't need protection like uh, Liberty is, which actually prevents you from running the program at its peak need. Um, to give you an example of the way Liberty, the Palm Pilot uh, Game Boy emulator, is protected, it uses seven code segments. It uses four encrypted segments. It encrypts it against its own key database. And then, just to prevent you from doing what we've just done up here on, sc on screen and disassembling it, it actually uses an illegal instruction by 3Com, a two-byte instruction, to prevent you from disassembling it. But it uses it 1,100 times inside of its code. So you can imagine the heft that it's added to the application and to the uh, actual function of it. Future exploits for the Palm Pilot, things to watch out for. This is very, this is nice. This is from the 3 com website. I thought it was good because it's like we've all graduated. People will exploit conduits. Anyone can write a conduit. A conduit sits in your hot sink and it coordinates data from your Palm Pilot to any executable. Anything. You can write any executable. If you use um, Pocket Quicken or if you use Ultrasoft Money, that's what it does. It puts a custom conduit in there. When you hot sync your Palm Pilot, transfers that information to its executable and it writes it to a database. In the case of Ultrasoft Money, it writes it to your Microsoft Money database. Conduit is an executable that translates or alters Palm databases during hot sync. It can when you install a conduit, it doesn't ask you. Conduits are DLL files. They're hooked into your hot sync. Um, it adds the DLL to your Palm directory. It makes a registry enter, uh, entry, and it uses what's called the notifier DLL for conflict resolution. This is required by 3Com. This is where uh, it actually uh, is actually really weak in that Anyone can reset the notifier DLL part of a conduit to make it do anything that it wants. You can take that information, you could dump it out to TCPIP, you could put an email in someone's directory that sends all of your Palm Pilot information to someone. It can interact at the system level of Windows, so you can make it execute a Visual Basic script every time you start up your Internet Explorer window. It's dangerous. There's absolutely zero way to protect against it other than being diligent. We'll talk about that real quick. Write contents to a network location for monitoring. Second idea is Trojans. Your Palm Pilot, we all love the applications. They're all free. Palm users will load almost anything if it's free on their Palm Pilots. Little dancing bugs and taxi cabs and everything else you can imagine. With a hack, if you have Hackmaster on your uh, machine, every time you reset your Palm Pilot, it reloads all your hacks. Everything hooks in at the system level. So basically, if you hot synced 
and you tell the Palm Pilot that it needs to reset after hot sync, and then you reset it, whatever you've just put in is loaded in your Palm and working at the system level. You can alter the built-in database types, which is published in the SDK, and you can put custom keys in there to track information that people don't see because the PDB files are only viewable by the exact routine inside the PRC file. So you can store anything you want in there. That's a great in idea if you guys want to really protect your information, is to write raw data to a PDB database. And you can store your data in someone else's palm. Every database is linked by a creator ID. Every time you synchronize, every piece of information is shared with the HotSync application. So you can grab a creator ID off another application, put it on your custom database, write anything you want to that database. And when you synchronize next time, it will be available to you on the computer. These are how you protect yourself. Turn your beam off. It's not going to happen now. It may not happen next month, but it will happen soon that someone will take advantage of that. And you can imagine walking around DEF CON, you're walking around, all of a sudden everyone's Palm Pilots are being reset. Some guy's kind of hiding his face in the corner. <laughs> monitor your hot sync log. All you have to do to monitor your hot sync log is go to, uh, I won't be able to get it up with the presentation, is to right click on your hot sync and say view log. Make sure that nothing's being installed in your directory. Um, you could test your applications by using it on the Palm emulator. Anyone can get that. Go to 3Com's site, search for POSE. And you should check your hot sync properties for, custom, uh, for rogue conduits. Conduits, again, can pass any information anywhere. They pass to a Windows executable. In the future, uh, you're going to see uh, Palm viruses, which will actually be Trojans, and which will be taking information and transporting around using conduits and using the hot sync uh, vulnerabilities. So Mantech has a Palm virus protection that they were supposed to release a month ago. I've seen a beta of it. It's not out yet, but it's really nice. It lets you actually watch what's being hot synced back and forth between your palm. It lets you authorize conduits that are to be hot synced. Um, if you want to write up this, some of the programs we've talked about, like Pilot Disassembler, which is a free disassembler, is, are available here at this website. Thank you guys very, very much for sitting in this. I want to take a, a questions for about three minutes, um, if anyone has any, and go over some of the different Palm aspects. Yes, sir. This will be um, uh, emailed to Dark Tangent afterwards. It will be on the DEF CON site. And it will also be here later this evening. So you'll be able to get it tomorrow morning if you want to get it. Yes. Um, I recommend using a program called JAWS Memo. It's 448-bit, uh, I'm sorry, it's 4096-bit encryption. Um, I also, I tend to be, uh, and Bruce and I talked the other day, a fan of Blowfish encryption. And you can use, um, what's the name of the application? Um, oh, CryptPad, which actually is an encrypted memo pad that uses Blowfish encryption. Both of them are really good. Don't choose something like SAM which is uh, uh, by a Swedish developer, it can use up to like a one-bit key. So you're thinking, oh, I want one byte to, pr to protect my information. I recommend something stronger like the Blowfish encryption. Any other questions? All right, thank you guys very, very much, and have a good day. Look for the information up there. Thank you.